welcome back to Rum Club World. And this week, boy, oh boy, it's going to be exciting. And hey, Rum Club World, y'all know me, Damien Dubs. I'm in the building. Jesse G. Vals. <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. Jesse G in the building. Thank you. <laughs> Vals. Vals. No, no matter how much times we try with yeah, this man. Boy. Yeah, boy. All right. <laughs> So today, I think today is a very, very special day for us. Every day is special, but today is extra special. Yes, exactly. We have with us mm-hmm. Daniel Jones. Where, where um, crowd uh, sound effects? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and we have a live audience, a live a audience today. Live studio, studio audience. audience. <laughs> right, friends, friends to the Rum Club. Friends of the show. Friends of the show. <laughs> Daniel Jones is the global brand ambassador for Amaro de Angostura. And um, we have, what's his name again? Vals. No, Vals Jr. <laughs> no, sorry. KV. KV. Kevin KV. Valley yeah. and Ali P. Ali P. In the house. Yeah, in the house. Yeah? So, Daniel, welcome to the show. No, thank you, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here, guys. Tell us a little bit about yourself. All right, well, um, I love rum. Yeah. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> say, say that again. <laughs> say that again. I love rum. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah, so um, I work with the House of Angostura as the, the global brand ambassador. Um, I've been with the company since 2013. Uh, I started as a, as a bartender. Uh, I won, they have a global cocktail challenge that they host every year. Now it's bi-an- biannually. Mm-hmm. And uh, where you have bartenders from all over the world competing. Um, so it's really a nice global platform. And I was the first Caribbean bartender to, to have won that competition. In 2013, and since then, I've boop, been with boop. them. That's what we're talking about. <laughs> Represent. <laughs> yeah. So it's truly a pleasure to be here. Um, for me, you know, I, I'm an island boy, you know, and I get to see the, the appreciation for rum on a global platform. You yes. know, I, I travel to many countries in the, the Europe market, um, European market, and to, to the, the Americas, North, Central, South. And, you know, there's such a love for rum, and not just rum, but, you know, for the House of Angostura. Oh, yeah. You know, and um, for me, I, I fly the flag with pride. Yes. Hmm. So, the, so the passport well stamp up. <laughs> the, the, when you go to Europe and think, does ask about rum club? Does ask about us? <laughs> <laughs> they, they start with the rum. Oh, yeah, okay. they, they, they do ask about the rum. <laughs> <laughs> That's what that no, but back to the passport. You, you, you went and add extra pages to the passport and thing, because with all these turns you'll be making and stuff like that, I ain't see our average passport have any enough space for them uh, stamps. Yeah. And the business yeah. passport. You yeah. understand? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, you know, I give thanks to the opportunity as a, as a Caribbean bartender. You okay. know, the, the Caribbean bartender is known as the guy who makes the, the rum punch and the, the pina coladas. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, which are, yeah, which yeah, are yeah. undisputed new <laughs> era classics. Like <laughs> 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 but, you know, um, when I have to stand up on a platform, uh, you know, in, in, in Greece, in Prague, and, and stand up and speak to bartenders, advanced bartenders, mm-hmm. you know, I definitely have to ensure that I'm able to deliver. Okay. And to uh, represent. That's yeah. what we say in we- from the West. In this yeah, world, yeah, 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 this man talking, and I feel, a little, I feel a little nervous, but <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wait, yeah. <laughs> I'm just an average rum drinker. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so I do have an appreciation for rum. Uh, rum for me is just not a, a spirit of category; it's a it's a lifestyle. Mm-hmm. You know, it, there's so much about it that it's one of the growing s- categories of spirit that continually grows. You know, yeah. there's been a drop in whiskey, there's been a drop in vodka, mm-hmm. but you have rum being explored now. One of the reasons for that, you don't have a governing body that controls rum. For okay. instance, cognac. You can't produce cognac from the, the period of March to October. Okay. These guys are so stringent about it. They will go into your, st- your distillery and put wax seals onto your distillery. What? Yeah. You know, and this oh, is okay, why, okay. You know, because you have a governing body for it. Okay. Okay. In France, yeah. you know, but with rum, you don't have that. Now, what that does, it does have, you do have a, a few of the catfish involved. You, know, you have mm-hmm. some, some rums with, you know, claiming to have a certain level of integrity, whether by mm-hmm. age claim or whatever forms of marketing they choose. Or made out right. of, um, was it beet, beet, beet beetroot? Beetroot, yeah. yeah. Things like beetroot. Um, I mean, yeah. What is that? You know? <laughs> and, and plenty of coloring and all them kind of yeah. things. So, I mean, you, you have all these elements that, that are not, you know, because we don't have a governing body to filter all these things. Mm. But this is why we have people like yourself who are the voice for rum can now kind of allow platforms to, to showcase rum yes. and showcase yeah. the ones that really have that integrity and deserve to be spoken and enjoyed properly. <laughs> so, so tell us, <laughs> what's this, this, this thing that we enjoy so much? Mm-hmm. Gazoo. Mm-hmm. What else we call it? Fire water. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All these lovely Tr- names. Truth what, what, serum. What, yeah, truth uh, serum. What, what is rum? And you know, I heard you talk mm. about. And you know, for me, it's aphrodisiac. <laughs> 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 um, you know, uh, so definitely I have to, to speak about 
you know, Angostura right. and, and it being a pinnacle of it. Now, the bitters, has, the, the Angostura bitters, aromatic bitters, has been a part of the very foundation of the cocktail industry. Right. You know, as an island boy, we don't see it. But I can tell you, the first definition of a cocktail was defined in 1806 by someone we know as, we call the professor, Dr. Jerry Thomas. Mm-hmm. And he defined it as, um, you know, a drink or, or any stimulating liquor. That mm-hmm. contains spirit water, sugar, and bitters. Okay. And then he went. So he went on to def- to, to, to to even uh, clarify a little bit more by stating that what differentiated a cocktail from a drink was the inclusion of bitters as an ingredient. Okay. Now Angostura aromatic bitters was one of the first to be created. You know, in 1824. Yeah. So we've been a part of the very foundation of the cocktail industry. I can tell you something yeah. about bitters. If I could slide in a bit. Yeah. Every fridge in Trinidad and Tobago, there's a there's a. I think I had two bottles. <laughs> you keep bitters in your fridge. One in my fridge and one in, my, one in the pantry. No, no, Paolo. Bitters um, had to be stored in a warm, dry place. Um, Daniel, that's, that's, that's true. <laughs> I think it's, it's up to the individual. I have mine in my fridge. You know, I, I will say this to you guys. Mm-hmm. I, I grew up in the south side, deep south, Point okay. Fortin. Mm-hmm. All right, so I'm a country boy. Yeah. And, um, you know, lunchtime, if you had to make juice, you go, you pull out your grapefruit, you pick it from the yes, tree. Right. Yes, yes. Squeeze it. Thing. A little lesson, some yeah, bitters. That's it, right? Yeah. Now, there are different appreciations for Angostura bitters okay. globally. Yeah. The first time I went to Chicago, I walked into a bar and the bartender is pouring 10 shots of Angostura bitters. God, Jesus. <laughs> killing people, killing people. Shut up. Listen, listen to me, yeah. I was like, killing man, manhood. <laughs> <laughs> now, <laughs> when you look at a bottle of Angostura aromatic bitters, it mm-hmm. contains 44.7% yeah. alcohol by volume. Right. right? Jesus, yep. I'm free. Nah, yeah. yeah. So it, it, packs, it packs a mean punch. Now, the thing is, I walked in, so I, when I saw this, I literally just walked up to him and said, listen, buddy, mm-hmm. whoever that is for, it's on me. Just pour a <laughs> shot for me also. I just, I just jump in one time. Yeah, I can't. Yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> Trini boy, Trini boy. <laughs> now, really. every bar that I went to in Chicago, they were pouring shots of Ango. There is a bar, you can Google it, called Best Intentions. They have Angostura on draft. Angostura Not diluted, draft. not carbonated. Literally just pull the Cooper head and you're pouring Angostura shots. Oh I did a God. guest bartending <laughs> shift there about uh, two, three weeks ago. Uh-huh. And I didn't do it inside the main bar. I did it outside. A nice little outdoor event. Mm-hmm. And this guy brought two full 750 ml bottles full of Angostura bitters. He's like, hey, this is for all the shots later. This is for the shots? shots. Yeah. This is how... This is how this bitter is how shots? Bitter you don't shots. have that yeah. kind of appreciation. <laughs> ah, something you. Rob the wool. Listen, keep Something yeah. you. Now, I'll tell you this. Mm-hmm. When you grow up in Angostura bitters, you don't think about that. Now, no. as a bartender... You have what is called the anatomy of a cocktail. The anatomy of a cocktail starts with a base spirit, right. followed by a supplementary or secondary spirit, which is like a liqueur. Mm-hmm. Then you have a modifier. Now, a modifier is like your juice, your nectars, your syrups, mm-hmm. that kind of thing. And then you have an accent, which is the bitters. Right. It okay. accentuates the cocktail. Mm-hmm. Right. All right? So when you go to New York City, you know, these guys, you know, we only pour dashes of bitters into mm-hmm. our cocktails. You know, when you go to Peru, they add three dashes on top of their national drink, which is a Pisco Sour. Right. You know, yeah. it's a, there are different appreciations for it. Okay. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I will tell you, when you take a shot of Angostura bitters, it's a, it's a revol- it's, it, it, it revolutionizes your mind. You know, oh I'm boy. telling you, your whole palate just gets stimulated. Do you have any bitters there? Listen to me. You don't, I don't talk. And, uh, uh, you know, I don't leave. Walk, 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 I don't leave home without it. <laughs> I, feel I, I feel I watch. I want better shot. Shots for everybody. Oh, yes. No. <laughs> but we are. Uh, but settle the score. How are you supposed to store the bitters mm-hmm. in the fridge? <laughs> yeah, because that, that's something like an argument. Because I have one in my fridge home mm-hmm. and I have one in my cupboard. Right. Right. No, I, I will tell you this. Um, a bottle of bitters don't last too long by me, all right? I that, think that's, we, one, that's one thing to, 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 to I close think, up. I think, mine kinda, I think mine's been there a couple of years. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't buy bitters often. <laughs> yeah. So you could store it anyhow. Right. Um, room temperature is fine. You know, remember that percentage of alcohol is going to allow it to, to, to stay for a lifetime. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, I'll tell you this. The two most expensive cocktails in the world, mm-hmm. one was created by uh, Salvatore Calabrese in a Playboy bar in London mm-hmm. and one by a Club 23 in Melbourne in, uh, Melbourne in Australia. Mm-hmm. Now, with Salvatore, his cocktail cost something like £2,500 per cocktail. The other one cost close to $5,000, £5,000, sorry, per cocktail, it's which takes good, two days to gold. create. The one in Australia, that's... that, that that, uh, that you know was more expensive. <laughs> now, right now my mouth open. Right now, right? <laughs> now listen to me. This is not kind of cocktail that you just design randomly and put it on a menu. This right. is something that has a strong PR backing and that kind of thing. Right. Okay. And you know, and one of the ingredients is Angostura aromatic bitters. Now wow. they use a vintage bottle. Okay. Right. No, 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 no. 
two years. Yeah, that yeah, might cover. You still need a good few years yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to reach vintage. <laughs> mature, so, mature. So, so, go ahead, look at that. So, so vintage meaning that it's, it comes from Angostura as a vintage product or they have it and they age it? Yeah, they, just, they had it for a while. Okay. So what you have, you have some collectors, you know, people okay. who collect these things and they keep it. Now, remember Angostura, we've, we've been producing aromatic bitters from, since 1824, right, yeah. you know. So you have some people who still have, you know, old remnants and, and, and some that were way back yeah. Yeah. when the bottle probably had a little change and that kind of thing. But we've never changed the recipe to this day. Right. And, uh, you know, to this day, it's still sodium-free, gluten-free, kosher certified. <laughs> Somebody even asked wow. me if there was I mean, bee pollen everybody. inside of it. <laughs> <laughs> everybody could participate. <laughs> even, even before these... Don't um, discriminate. Even, though, yeah, even before these terms became trending terms now. I mean, you know, yeah. you guys Fors- were doing Foresight. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. Gluten-free. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, have, I have one quick um, Angostura story, um, bitter story. I remember one night... I kind of had a little too much drinks now. Mm-hmm. So I said, boy, let me get a soda to kind of just settle myself a little bit now. Mm-hmm. And a friend of mine who is in the audience today said, well, she like a soda with a little bitters. So right. She put a little, a little dash. dash of bitters. Mm. That was it. You knock out. That, that 40 something percent? Wow. That was like if I take an extra <laughs> shot on top of water. Yeah, that, that, was, was, like that, was that was like a cherry. That was like a cherry. I had to go and lie cream. down and rest. And <laughs> so, so that was the rub. So, I mean, it's, surprise, it's surprising for me to hear people taking that as shots now. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think Rum Club will, we will be telling you about that shortly. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. we'll definitely be trying that. <laughs> for real. Don't yeah, sad. definitely, definitely. So, it's, it's you know, it's, uh, it's very stimulating on the palate and, and a lot of bartenders like to take shots of Fernet and that kind of thing mm-hmm. like, you know Jägermeister if you're, you know, if you're into that kind of style they have what's called a bespoke or bartender's product you know mm-hmm. so the bartenders they like to do these you know crazy stuff mm-hmm. you know a little bit mm-hmm. eccentric so you find that that's where the whole co- cocktail culture kind of went into a different direction so shots of Ango is a bartender's thing you okay. know it's not a consumer mm-hmm. thing okay. see, you know, but we don't adv- advocate it because uh, I remember the way I, the way I found out about it when I visited the bar uh, a year ago, the brothers came and told me, hey, you know, we want to get uh, kegs of, sorry, barrels of Angostura bitters. Barrels. You know, I said, well, you could get, you could get, you could get <laughs> kegs, you know. Yeah. And um, they said, well, we want to have Angostura bitters on draft and that kind of thing. You mm-hmm. know? And <laughs> now, I heard them, I, I listened to them, eh? and I said, you know, these guys are very ambitious, you know. Yeah. There's probably just a few people, you know, asking for the bitter shot and that kind of thing. And, you lines know, outside, the, but not knowing that there are lines outside the bar. Six months later, you know, I get a call from someone who wanted to do an article with me and to contribute regarding a bar that's that has Angus Tribbett on draft. Okay, you know, so when I heard that, I'm like, yeah, these fellas, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they got their kegs, but they put them into barrels, and um, and you know, and they have it. So again, you know, uh, what we love is the fact that it's we've been a part of the very foundation. We continue mm-hmm. to be a part of the evolution. Yeah, you know, and that's the flagship of the House of Angus Now, in addition to that. We also have the largest range of award-winning rums, right. you know, which I'm very proud to say. In addition to that, we also can say that we have the most expensive rum in the world, which is Legacy by Angostura. I have none today, guys. I've never tried it. They only did 25 bottles. Right. Uh, one bottle went for, uh, you know, like something like 25,000 uh, pounds. Per bottle, the exactly. bottle was done by Asprey. The youngest in the blend was 34 years old, um, so it was really a beauty of a of a rum to to, to showcase. Wow. Um, it's already sold out, you know. The, the so that's, a co- that's like a collector's item. Yeah, oh, that yeah. is. Anybody popping that? Yeah. Yeah. So if you know anyone who needs a drinking partner, yeah, get him a holler. You know, I I've never tried it. So <laughs> it's something that um I speak about often. Uh, but I never understand legacy. like okay so you buy a bottle of legacy and you have that there that's your pride and joy yeah. you're watching our legacy but you never get to taste it when when mm. do you taste it mm. oh, you've bought it it's already mm. it's already aged how old yeah yeah right yeah. You, you leave it on your shelf there mm. for another it's just 10 years yeah. so it's now let's say close to 50 years yeah, yeah. it's almost like you're a wicked man yeah, to, right. to open, to open it's that bottle. It's back and right. It's yeah, just back yeah, and right to come make you have a truth. Yeah, you just have the truth. You're showing people your truth. Yeah. You're yeah. doing nothing yeah. with the no, truth. I feel, you. I feel you know. I, my philosophy is different. You know, <laughs> I have one life to live. Mm-hmm. And listen to me. If I could establish good memories of it, I'll hold on to that. Oh, yeah. You know, so if, if I... if Listen to me. If I you guys come over by me, and I know you guys when? appreciate rum. When? <laughs> 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 what is this invitation for again? <laughs> I'll give you an update right after, man. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys come over, and you say, I know this is people who will, will appreciate this spirit. Right. Then, you know, I want to drink, I want to drink and create some good memories with right. people, like, you know, things right. like that. So, yeah. I, you know, I don't have the, I don't need to have a, a bar that's just for, 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 for sure. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 yeah. 
yeah. we, me neither. That's why we have nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the people keep asking me, "What are we drinking?" Yeah, yeah. What yeah. That's a big question, and that's, that's that is a long-standing question when it, when uh, in the podcast. You know? yeah. The what question you, is, "What, what we, we drinking?" drinking? Yeah. yeah. So today we're going to take one from the, the portfolio. As I said, we have the largest range of award-winning rums. Now, what I love about the House of Angostura is that. The rums are really an expression of our culture. Mm-hmm. You know, we are, it's 1.3 million in Trinidad, and mm-hmm. we have what is called a melting pot, you know, of, of races. Yes. You know, I, I grew up in, in Point Fortin, which is deep south. When you say south, nobody even think Point Fortin, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, my great grand is from India. You know, my, my mom is, is mixed with Spanish Indian, my dad is African. You know, so, you know, I grew up with this mix, and, and this is what I feel like the, the rum range in the House of Angostura kind of Embodies. expresses, yeah, yeah. because. Each rum has an independent personality. It's a different rum. So mm-hmm. when you taste one, you don't taste all. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You really have to go through. Mm-hmm. And what I love to do when I do a full flight of the rums, you know, is ask everyone at the end, you know, which rum connected with you? Resonates with wow. you. Yeah, yeah. And that's the beauty of it. I, I think all is going to connect with me. <laughs> <laughs> well, well we, I mean, we, we're 20-something episodes in, yeah, and we're still connected. We're yeah, still yeah, connected. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. But I feel you on that because yeah. we've, we've had this debate on this show already, and mm-hmm. I... Nearly reached the blows with them over 1919. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. You know, um, they have those who would favor um, others in the range, yeah, single yeah. barrel. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a friend um, who says that he only drinking black label because right. he don't want to develop a palate for anything, anything else. else. Yeah, right. Yeah. You yeah. understand? Because he can't afford anything. Because he can't else. afford <laughs> it. You know, we had, we had some, we had some um, younger, some I don't want to say kids, but some younger people, early yeah. 20s, mm-hmm. who came and I mean, they, they say. White, white, and s- white, white and Sprite, white that is it. They're not right. drinking yeah. anything else. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, so the range, you know, every, so, there's uh, something for everyone. Well, mm-hmm. what I will say, but so you have, two, you have two portfolios. You have an international portfolio mm-hmm. and you have a local portfolio. Right. And um, this is what I love about, you know, sharing the House of Angostura and how cultural uh, the influence is, you know, because so you had the Seagurt's family who created the bitters. Mm-hmm. You know, a, a German physician by the name of Dr. Johann Seagurt took his entire family from Germany and went to Venezuela. Mm-hmm. Now, at this time, he didn't have TripAdvisor reviews to, to know what they, <laughs> what, yeah, you know, what they expect down yeah. there, right? <laughs> <laughs> this man went across there, different culture. Uh, he worked for the army of Simon Bolivar, where he created the bitters as medicine. And that is why today, uh, no one has ever been able to create a product that supersedes the integrity of Angostura aromatic bitters right. mm-hmm. because it was really designed as medicine. Its second career became that's into cocktails. So okay. that, that's, that's why um, Ali yeah. have it in water to, well, to yeah. set to yeah, your yeah. yeah. <laughs> It really, it really works. Like, with like gas and things. Well, <laughs> let, me give, let me digress a bit. My first cocktail I had at six years old. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I went to my stomach hurting. I said, Mom, you know, my stomach hurting, man. She's like, son, have a seat. Yeah. You know, she takes out a, a tea mug, put some hot water in it, yeah. a bar spoon of sugar, cinnamon, on back, opens up the cupboard and pulls out a bottle of Angostura bitters okay. and puts a few dashes in that. First cocktail called Breaking Gas. <laughs> 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 you know, so I, again, so coming back to the portfolio, yeah. Yeah. you have the international and, and local portfolio. Now, the Seagus family who created the bitters, his sons, when he passed away in Venezuela, mm-hmm. they trademarked the name of the town called Venezuela that they grew up in. And they came to Trinidad mm-hmm. because it was better for, for business. Mm. And they partnered with the number one distillers on the island called the Fernandez family. Right. All right. So you, you kind of understand yeah, now where yeah, things are right here. Um, so made. the Fernandez family and the Seagus family came together and started producing rum in 1876. Mm-hmm. Right. Now they came to Trinidad by 1874 and by 1876 started blending rums. That's the same Seagut's from the Seagut Square. And there's a yeah. Seagut Square mm-hmm. somewhere in Port of Spain. Huh? Yeah. Yes. I, I, I did uh, an architectural tour for the first time uh, yeah. a few months ago. And I grew up in Trinidad and listen to me, you know, it was was just so remarkable just driving around and listening to the stories of, of, of Trinidad you know mm-hmm. walking on the mm-hmm. promenade and hearing these things so that's yeah. how the history connects to all the places that we Correct. take for granted yeah. 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 most yeah. of the streets on, on, on Woodbrook are, mm-hmm. are named under the Seagulls family yeah. Oh, okay. a lot of them I mean if you go to La Cantina so. today it's, it's, it's one of the houses of the Seagulls family so oh. Angostura oh, right, has a, yes. yeah. so if you go into there's a Seagulls room inside mm-hmm. of uh, La Cantina a lot of pictures and so on yeah. in, in, in La Cantina that's okay. on Victoria Avenue so like Anna Street and all they named under the, the you know the the family mm-hmm. that okay. were under the secrets. So when they partnered with the Fernandez family, they started the House of Angostura, mm-hmm. you know, and this is why some of the rums you'd see like Vat Nineteen and Fernandez, and you'd see those rums still being still being available today mm-hmm. right. because it has a strong cultural presence, right. yeah. and there are a lot of people who connect with it. Yes. So this is why we've never changed that, you know. But we do have an international portfolio, gotcha. which can uh, so it starts with the Reserva. Uh, the Caribbean rum selection, which starts with the Reserva, the five-year-old, and the seven-year-old. Okay. You know, right. and you know. So, but when you come to the local portfolio, you have White Oak, mm-hmm. you have Single Barrel, 
You have uh, Old Oak, which some people like. Yeah. You have Fernandez, yeah. Vat 19. Yeah. You know. Royal Oak. Royal Oak. Yeah. yeah, it's single barrel. I mean, these are the, the local rums, which mm-hmm. people love. And I remember right. sometime, you know, I, I deal a lot because I, of, of, I travel a lot. So I deal with the international portfolio. Right. And I remember sometime, you know, I was hanging out in Tobago with the master distiller. John George's, you know, I mean, John is like the heart of Angostura. You meet this guy and you, you just be charmed by him, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, and I say, John, what are we drinking? We went to, to the Green Bar, you know. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's in the green, the green Shadow Green Bar, you know, on Tobago. It's Where like a hook and spit kind of <laughs> rum yeah. shop style. Yeah. Yeah. You sit down here and somebody on the side here taking yeah. a piss on <laughs> 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 that, that could be yeah. anywhere. That could be anywhere. Yeah, actually, they had, to, they, had to, they had to push a drunk man to yeah. get a table. Yeah. <laughs> That's on that main road, um... That, that, on yeah. that main road after you pass Crumport Hotel, yeah, going to, yeah. uh, okay. oh. close to block, block, um, block, 22? block 22. Yeah, where you get the, the, the big sandwiches okay, on time. All right, good. Yeah. Yeah. So I still don't know the man. I'm thinking, well, this is master distiller. Like, you know, you're going to call on for some 19, 19, 18, right. 24. Yes. Yeah. Uh, my boy called for some from uh, Fernandez Black Label. So yeah. I say, well, all right, I drinking that too with you. you know? so, <laughs> <laughs> so we drinking some uh, Fernandez with, um, with some ginger ale. And, uh, you know, and it's the first time I really kind of dived into it. Right. And even, um, you know, so not saying that it doesn't have a strong international quality it's just mm. that they have designed that for so a few months ago i launched uh we launched white oak in brazil okay. you know and when i went there you know for me now what i did also was a comparative set so i would take all of the the, the competition out there the the bacardi and and all the other brands out there the havana club and yeah. these things and you know and pair it up and for me i had to personally do this before and it's the first time i've actually i knew about it i liked it but it's the first time I really fell in love with White Oak. Yeah. Well, I'll be honest with you. you know? and, right. um, because before, you know, for me, what I love uh, representing the House of Angostura is that I, there's a, I could be genuine. You mm-hmm. know, I could be passionate because the brand has integrity. All I have to do is just sit down and have a drink with you. Yeah. And that's it. You know, so, I don't have to throw a seals pitch. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> and, and, and I agree with you because when we had um, White Oak on that episode, and mm-hmm. the white and Sprite, mm-hmm. and I mean, we were kind of pleasantly surprised because yeah. we hadn't had white oak in oh, such yeah. a long time. Right. We was like, yo, this thing really tastes good. So, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So. yeah so. so, like in Brazil, um, you know, on the streets, they make a lot of caipirinhas. Yeah, correct. And they use um, their cachaca. <coughs> Yeah, cachaça. And um, mm-hmm. they have their own, they have their own brands and so on that they prefer. You've been mm-hmm. to Brazil already? Uh, is, is just, just you're talking about. Oh. Because I, 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 I don't know this one. one. Whatever, I, I, I whatever, whatever right? Yes. So, but I, I've seen where they, they make caipiroscas, where they, they, um, mm-hmm. they, 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 they put vodka. Mm-hmm. So, with the introduction of white oak, you think there's room for uh, a white oak base in their national drink? Mm-hmm. So the, the beauty of rum, uh, it's a growing culture, and it's one that's trending, right? So, you know, when we did that launch, uh, it wasn't about trying to present something that can uh, be so a caipirinha. No, okay. uh, you okay. know, caipirinha is a national drink of, of, of Brazil. Yeah. Right. Um, but one of the things you did is a saying, the people who drink caipirinha are the tourists, you know? Uh, <laughs> serious? <laughs> <laughs> because what you find happening is that you have the evolution of your palate. So yeah. people, are, you know, they, they get more money, they want to show that they, they, they can spend more, they, so they, they're drinking a different categories they're going outside of the the cultural sense of mm. things mm-hmm. so um yeah. with the rum culture it's a, it's a growing culture also so whiskey rum vodka that kind of thing um with white oak you know it's really one of those uh beauties that you can create a mojito with a blanc yeah. it's called it's what you call a blanco rum yeah and you can create all these beautiful cocktails with it you know you can use flavor profiles that will not be masked by you know by a, a heavier body type of rum so tell us about all the, we hear in all these terms, Blanco, mm, yeah. age, how much of a year, flavor profile, blended, <laughs> flavor profile. <laughs> school us, school us, because, you know, Yo, when, I, you, when you leave here today, uh, we have to be subject matter experts. Yeah, that's right. Rum, rum, rum club for nothing, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I'm the teacher. You know. yeah. All so, right, all right, we're going to learn today. <laughs> all right, so, but it, you know, just to give you a breakdown on, on the what makes Angostura rums unique, and this will kind of open up your eyes to the, the different styles of rum. Right. So, you know, the islands are what you call captured islands. So you had the, the French, the Dutch, the Spaniards all fighting for islands. Yes. Mm-hmm. So whoever had the big guns would, would rule and, uh, they, you know, based on their colonialism, they would create their impression of, of this spirit. So this is why you have the French agricole style. You have the Spanish Solera style. We were on the Spanish influence first and then British. Right. So we have uh, more of a Navy style, a British Navy style. Mm-hmm. But it's not dark, funky style. It's more elegant. It's more refined because we use column distillation. Right. So when you talk about navy style, I know that's that's the way in which the rum is distilled. Yes, this is really more of a 
the cultural expression in that. Okay. So with a Solero style, it's a different system, which is the Spanish. You know, some the Spanish were known to add some elements of port into their into their oh, rums. Gotcha. They okay. had a different aging system, which is a Solero system. Uh, you had a French agricole style, which is different because you know it has it's going under the French governing body. You know, and um, is a type of sugar cane and that kind of thing. Mm. Right. Now, rum uh, under proper definition is uh, any uh, spirit that's made with the byproduct of. Uh, sorry, not byproduct, but yeah, primary ingredient of sugar, sugar cane. cane yeah. right? So whether it's sugar cane juice or sugar cane uh, molasses, molasses, you know. I mean, I don't know where the beetroot fits in, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't. Imposters. Uh, listen to me, listen to me. You call it hipster if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come on, come on. In the rum. <laughs> in the. <laughs> you know, they love the rum. So they're going to call it vodka, but they call it rum. Right. So, you know, give them some, some, some praise for that, man. But. Um, so with these different styles, you know, we have a, a navy style because of that British influence, right? Okay. Um, so now our rums are molasses based, and uh, one of the things I like to tell people is that the terroir is a big part of of, of our rums. Now we use molasses; that's nothing less than fifty one percent sugar content. Yeah. Now it's very difficult because nowadays the sugar production process is more refined because of uh, you know technological advancement. Yes. Mm-hmm. So you have less wastage. Mm-hmm. Now remember, mola- molasses is a is a byproduct of the sugar cane pro- of the sugar, sugar. process. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we have to get it from different parts of the world: Fiji, Guyana, but, Dominica. But look at that. Oh, so strange enough, mm-hmm. and, and, and we were a sugar producer, and you know, yeah. of course, mm-hmm. you know, things just change over yeah. time as with anything else. Yeah. yeah. So the so the we know imp- important. Yeah. By, yeah, byproducts. Yeah, I mean okay. the the latest rum on the portfolio is called uh, the Angostura 1787. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a, known as a super premium. It's uh, 15 years uh, uh, of age. Uh, the youngest in the blend being 15 years, and that 1787 that marks uh, the year of the sh- first sugar plantation okay. called the House of La Perouse in Trinidad and Tobago. Okay. There you go. Now okay. at that time, sugar was gold. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. it was really a, it's a really a historic moment in Trinidad. Mm-hmm. So this is where you had like the you know Carony and all these places coming out from mm-hmm. from that mm-hmm. sugar plantation. Mm-hmm. You know. So so, so again, history, uh, history, yeah. uh, it's a history <laughs> class, yeah, yeah, you know, rum is closely tied to our history, oh, yeah. and you know, slavery. Oh, yeah. They came over here <coughs> yeah. to work the sugar plantations. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, now we've progressed, so we're no longer a sugar economy. Mm-hmm. So we reach the point where we import in molasses. Yeah, yeah. Right. But the thing is so ingrained in, in, us, in, in yeah. us, you That's know. It, yeah. right. So for me, when I travel and I see this appreciation, uh, you know, I'm an island boy. You mm-hmm. know, this is this is deep rooted inside of me. You know, so rum means more to me than just uh, you know, just uh, a rum and coke or heat or you know, it goes beyond that. So when I see people appreciating it, you know, I feel a sense of pleasure. Um, so coming back to the uniqueness of the House of Angostura, the have the molasses. Right. Mm-hmm. Now, one of the things that uh, you know people don't know is that we cultivate our own yeast. Now, what creates alcohol is a combination of, of yeast and sugar, right? right? It just creates ethanol. Mm-hmm. Now, with, uh, when you have yeast and sugar coming together, you know, it's something that you don't have control over. You know? So a lot of big brands, they purchase bulk yeast. Mm-hmm. You know? But people talk about yeast with beer. But when mm-hmm. you go into distilled spirits, you don't talk about it. Um, but it's a very significant factor. So with Angostura, we cultivate our own yeast. So much so that the, the tarot, and I remember... When we grow stuff here, it's more intense. You mm-hmm. can't have our celery sticks and buffalo wings. <laughs> yeah, no, you have to use you have to use it to season meat. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> So, but our dry season and rainy season, our taro is different. So, even our oranges, you don't get the bright, beautiful oranges. Yeah. you know, you get dark green and yeah, brown. It's not like Florida wrong, yeah. 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 But the skin is, it produces rich oils inside of it. Oh, this ah. is why the only niche bitters that we've ever created. Was What's the orange, orange bitters, orange mm-hmm. bitters. you know, to give that quality. Yeah. Right. So we cultivate our own yeast in our own terroir, all right? And now Trinidad is 10 degrees under the equator, which means we don't have a cool period. Yeah. You might not know this, you might not see it, but Jamaica, Barbados, even though they're Caribbean islands, there's a cool period. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But Trinidad, because we're 10 degrees, that's why we don't get hit by hurricanes, mm-hmm. right? We don't have that heat building up in that system. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, we have that heat building up here. 10 you degrees know? north, ever. Yeah. So South. South, south. South. Okay. I drink yeah. already. Yeah. <laughs> I need to drink. You need to drink. That's what I mean. <laughs> 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 yeah, 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 the boy yeah. hand. Yeah. <laughs> you see, it's part of the charm. This is why you call it foreplay. Half an hour foreplay. We have to take about one minute foreplay. Yeah. Typical. Yeah. 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 I like, I like to be a gentleman, man. <laughs> <laughs> you you stole it long time. <laughs> the whole process lasts me about 10 minutes. Give me three minutes again. Uh, yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So, I think the, 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 the Jamaicans would call that Dan Panilang. Uh, yeah. yeah. You know, you know that term, right? 
No, we don't <laughs> dance. Uh, just uh, uh, the Jamaican term for like lasting long, now. You call yeah. it da- tan pani long. That's tan pani long. Yeah, <laughs> tan pani. Right. That sounds like. Here's yeah, some, some um, grapevine Jamaican family. Yeah. Get him dead from yard, you know. <laughs> you, you have a Jamaican pet ball, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You hear the accent? What you said? What you said? What you said? Yeah. Oh my. So, <laughs> so we have the molasses. We have the the yeast, the yeast. right? And another part of it is uh, is the so aging process. So by your cultivating the yeast, you yeah. get more control Correct. over yeah. the fermentation process. So consistency, consistency, yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. So so much so that the original strand is located in a fixed deposit box in London. So oh. if ever there's Don't any mu- mess yeah. with me now, man. Yeah, 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 you, you can't so watch Angus so Light in it. Don't watch Angus Light in it. You can't use no Fermi pan. None at all. I call it a brand. I'm coming from your mouth. That's what I know. That's what I know. There's not no babash. None of moonshine you're talking about. They said those seven days cure all. You understand? So it's, it's serious. We're a medium-sized company, but the, the, the style of spirit is very crafted, you know? Mm. So, so you have the yeast. Now, as I said, so if ever there's any mutation of the yeast, we have the original strand to go back on, right. gotcha. you know? Yeah. So in addition to that, now we have the... Um, now, I have to say something that's really beautiful is that I would say, you know, a huge percentage of our blending team uh, is made up of women. Hey! Yeah, you know, so it's something that's yeah, that's very come charming. Come on, yeah. give me a phone now. Yeah, give some number. Come on, come on. We are, we are, we are. We are what to get the woman number one. No, no that's one a for the woman. Yeah, that's yeah. a culturally sensitive um, expression. Nah, yeah, you gotta get big respect for that because yeah. uh, it's very charming. Uh, I feel like. They are like they are the unsung heroes behind the, the 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 whole range of Angostura because you know it's really the blending team and the master distiller, Mr. John Georges, who really puts that passion and uh you know and presence and quality into the rums. So, so we have the the aging process, which is a big factor, which is where you know I'm coming to. So we use secondhand bourbon barrels, all right, mainly from Kentucky. Mm-hmm. Now right. we, we we don't uh, rechar the barrels; we steam them. When you steam them, now they're already aged; they're already seasoned. So they're able to develop congeners much faster. Now congeners, are, you know, like the, the fatty oils that are created in the aging process. Okay. Okay. So when you have a barrel that's sitting there with spirit inside of it, it develops congeners. That's all the the, the dark flavors and mm-hmm. and, and that nice, is, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. anything seeping <laughs> in. Yeah, yeah. So that's yeah. that's a the chemical niceness. reaction between the alcohol and yeah. the, the wood. Yeah, that's what wood does. Okay. Oh, gosh, that's that's yeah, wood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> alcohol and wood together, Jazel. Oh, worries and problems. <laughs> Moving along, moving yeah, along. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Just, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 So, what you have happening is, uh, so we, we, we use a, a 176 liter size barrel. Now, I'm saying all of this because this is Rum Club, so giving you some heavy facts here, oh, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, so we, uh, we create a certain surface area that uh, allows proper agitation in the spirit. Now, that size barrel, when you put spirit in a barrel, the heat makes it contract, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Expand and, 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 and contract. Mm-hmm. Now, within that, it creates agitation. But if the barrel is too big, the center of the spirit is not agitated with the congeners. Oh, okay. Okay. Because right. we're not stirring these, these yeah, spirits, yeah, right? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it sits there. So, you want this natural you know, agitation sure. taking mm-hmm. place. Mm-hmm. So, this is why the 176 liter size works with enough surface area. And, and the heat is incredible. We right. have, uh, oh. You have what is called the angel share. You guys probably know about that. So, when you fill a barrel, mm-hmm. the heat... Some of it evaporates without heat, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and that's what is known so as the angel, angel share. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I remember we had the number one carnival in the world, yeah, so we that. know how to party. So <laughs> even the angels are all know how to party. <laughs> 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 that's so why so we always give <laughs> things to the spirit. So the angel share could range from something from from nine to even twenty percent at, at times, you know, without heat. Wow. Okay. All right, but that creates such magic. That's the, that's the true magic behind this. Okay. So. Coming quickly for us to start drinking. Now we're going to focus yes, now so on the 1919. <laughs> all right. Now each of these spirits are an expression of the culture. All right. Before I hit the 1919, I spoke about the, Car- the Caribbean rums, the right. Reserva, mm-hmm. uh, the five year old and the seven year old. Mm-hmm. Now, if ever you look on the Angostura rums, you'd see a butterfly here. Mm-hmm. All right. Now I grew up in the countryside. All right. And I could tell you. And you know about butterfly? Nah, nah well, not, I wouldn't say butterfly. It makes me sound so soft now, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I try to catch butterfly. I go in the backyard yeah, and yeah, catch yeah, butterfly. Well, that, well, that's the thing. So, yeah, like boy, this. So, yeah. so when school was out, you know, August time, we, we are my, my brothers, we didn't have PlayStation, so we outside. Yeah, you know? yeah. And I remember we just passing this big sugar cane. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And sometimes you, you, you peel over the teeth and you oh, bite into the sweet letter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's you don't know about that. You're from Marabal. You're from Marabal. Yeah, city boy. I spent time down in St. Madeline. 
Maryland, New Zealand, uh, St. Madeline. I know about them thing. The right, train that, line. Yeah, yeah, it was down there too. You yeah. understand? So, I'm you know, shake, you yeah. know. <laughs> I'm sorry. 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 I'm he so wasn't born yet. Yeah, yeah. Stop, stop, stop. At, at that time, it was already done. Eh? It, it, was, it, was, <laughs> it wasn't existing. Eh? <laughs> There's only remnants down there. What's, what's happening? I feel like I'm going to put it. What's happening here? <laughs> so sometimes you pick the sugar cane and it, it's not sweet. You pick the dark purple ones or the light green ones and sometimes it's not sweet. So right. I always used to wonder, you know, how the farmers knew this. Mm-hmm. When I got involved in Angus I found out that the farmers knew when the sugar cane was at its ripest whenever the butterflies would sit oh. on the sugar cane. Oh. So for them, it was a sign from the gods. Yeah. Yeah. For us, we consider it a mark of perfection. And go. that is why we embody it. You know, you see this. Now, one of the things you've never seen, even if you look on the old packaging, mm-hmm. even a lot of bartenders don't realize there's a butterfly underneath the bottle. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Just yeah. 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 Nobody ain't watching the bottom of the bottle. Only when it's finished. That's how you tilt it. You tilt it, squeeze it, ring it. That's how you even know if you're seeing right. You know, right time the bottle finished. But, you know, and this is one of the, the charms that I love. You know, we, we're very cultural when we express the rums. The rums are an expression. This is why I have to go through all this story before we even yeah, sit and have a drink, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So if you get a chance to come and visit the House of Angostura, you get to, to do the Angostura Bitters Museum Tour. Yeah. You get a distillery tour. You get to sit with the master distiller and have a great drink of the, the, the portfolio. But you also get to visit the largest butterfly, butterfly museum yeah. in the oh, world. Oh, that's what that's yeah. what it ties in. Yeah. It's a story. Yeah, 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 it's a story. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. now you know. Yeah, yeah, you know, we already, <laughs> are already been saying we need to take a tour in um, Jizz and Dubs. So we need to do that. Well, we, we think line up. Up. We think set already yeah. on to you. Listen to me. The invitation there already. Yeah, so boy. Okay. In a VIP tour. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just nice. want to drink. You just yeah, want to yeah. drink. I, I want to go direct to the source. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, moving on to the next story. So, you have the Caribbean rums, the, the reserver. Now, this is the international portfolio I'm talking about, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, when we deal with White Oak and Reserva, um, uh, Single Barrel and, and all these local portfolios, the, m- the minimum age on these rums are like three years old. Mm-hmm. Okay. So if you go beyond the three, we're talking about the five-year-old, the seven-year-old, yeah. and then we have the 1990. Yeah. Now, people always, do, do, you know, through the audience, we don't think about it. But when I sit in a seminar and I talk to people, they want to know, what is it 1919 about? Significant. It right. doesn't have anything to do with prohibition, mm-hmm. you know? What is it about? So... The story behind it is beautiful. Uh, Mr. Fernandez, who was a master distiller for the Fernandez family, he heard that a government bond house had burned down. Mm-hmm. And the only thing that survived the fires were barrels of rum. Right. Now, between me and you, you think the first thing to go up in flames yeah. would be rum. The barrels of rum, right? Flammable <laughs> content, right? <laughs> so, uh, he, you know, as a master distiller, he knew that the true magic of any spirit is in the aging process and that heat applied to it. Okay. Mm-hmm. So he purchased all those barrels. Oh. Uh, inscribed on the barrels were that they were filled in the year 1919. Okay. Right. So this was one of his favorite blends that he used in many of his uh, you know, magnificent blends uh, mm-hmm. the, about 19 and all these different things. So our master distiller and his blending team wanted to pay homage to Mr. Fernandez. Okay. And in doing so, they decided the best way to pay homage to him is to recreate one of his favorite blends, the 1919. I just, just want to interject though. He said the government bond. Is it that it was just being held yes. by the government, any government bond for... It was, yeah, well, it was one of those importation houses. Yeah. So, okay, any, okay. Yeah, like a customs house. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, okay. so, this is where all the goods would come in. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, and things like alcohol at that time was... Uh, was what you have a lot of uh, legalities to go through. Okay, uh, gotcha. So, yeah. You know, so he purchased all the barrels, and this is where the true charm of it. So, this wasn't just created because there's a need for, you know, great daiquiris or a spice rum. This mm-hmm. was really creating a, a celebration. I don't know about you, but... When I'm celebrating, I want to go all out. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, uh, we're going to celebrate. <laughs> well, yeah, celebrate. <laughs> That's what we're about, celebrating Caribbean so, so culture. I, I, I speak about international yeah, rum. Yeah, yeah. I know there's a, a rum called Ten Keen. I know at one time I remember, mm-hmm. a long time ago, well, a few years ago. I used to see that in Duty Free. I was, and I used to see, actually, I remember, I remember, I remember there's an article in GQ magazine mm-hmm. um, uh, bringing it as one of the top rums in the world or something like that. Mm-hmm. But it's something that we never really saw being sold locally, locally yeah. in any major. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think there are a number of Angostura products that are not so local, is that correct? Part of the so international Ten Keen is an Angostura product. Oh, it's not. It was, it was, uh, the, there was a part of uh, Angostura did a, a part of the, the bottling process. Right, right. Uh, but we no longer are involved with Ten Keen Okay, anymore. got you. Um, I will say Ten Keen was, they were using virgin sugarcane juice. Right. All right. Now, this was a Hennessy brand. Oh. Right. That's why this tastes so bad now. <laughs> no. I, 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 I'm not, I, I didn't say anything. <laughs> no, for me. What I'm saying is that. Um, In my opinion. It's under the Hennessy uh, portfolio, uh, you know, group of companies. So, you find that um, they were doing a lot of production locally. Okay. Uh, but you find what you have happening in, in some of 
these big brands, they produce in different locations you right, know, right. For, for cost effective factors, mm -hmm. you know, and legality factors. They would produce, uh, you know, you'd get a Bacardi plantation or a distillery in different parts of the world, okay. you know, so things like that. But I always like to tell people 1.3 million people, one island, one distillery, mm -hmm. and we are responsible for every dash of bitters that goes into Manhattan's yeah. and old fashions all over the world. Oh, yeah. Every bottle of rum comes from Trinidad, you yeah, know. Yeah. Uh, I remember one time I was in uh, Sao Paulo doing a video shoot. And I was doing a, what is called an Amaroni, which is uh, with the Amar de Angostura, with Campari, with gin. And as I picked up the bottle of Campari, you know, the, the owner comes to me. He's like, no, 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 don't use this one. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, why? You know, it's like, you know, Campari is Campari. He's like, no, this one is made in uh, Sao Paulo. You know? uh. And he's like, you know, I like to, I, lo I love the one from, uh, from Italy. Mm -hmm. So I, for me, it was really the first time that I kind of, uh, I'm like, okay, well, what's, you know, I don't expect Campari to have much of a difference. Yeah. But when I tried it, you know, there was a difference. So one was a little bit sweeter. One was more bitter and dry which I like which is a true Campari style right. and um, you know so yes they may have their their, their standard uh, of how the product is supposed to be the finished product is supposed to be but sometimes you have a little bit of migration taking place in right. some of yeah. these products so you know I always love to tell people that you know there's a certain level of integrity with the bitters every bartender that picks up a bottle of aromatic bitters has that integrity that is going to do the same thing yesterday today and tomorrow so with a portfolio of rums we also have to deliver on that Okay, so folks, I apologize. As I just asked Daniel that question, and I realized he stopped organizing. He drinks now, so I asked him the question again because just uh, now, just now, now, he drinks the Daniel floor. Daniel is pouring, and Daniel did not give anything to the, the spirits. spirits. Yeah, Daniel is the one. You see, you know, it's not it's not a common practice for me to give the spirits, but if you guys want to do that, I will say, you know, for me, when I crack a first bottle of rum, uh -huh. you know, the spirit to comes to me. Ah! <laughs> There it goes. All right. <laughs> so yeah, I, I don't like to waste anything. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, this is for my palate, but I give, I pay homage. Yeah, yeah, all right. Homage you can live with that. You can live with that. You can live with that. You're good. You're good. You're good. You're good. So, so, okay, so uh, okay. at the risk of the, 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 the drink slowing down, I'll still ask a question. Uh, so, I'm in, I mean, a, a couple rum groups online. And uh, because I'm from Trinidad, people always mm -hmm. ask me questions which I have absolutely don't know the answer to. Mm -hmm. So, for example, they ask me, I think there's a, a, a Karani rum mm -hmm. that is, I guess, is a limited edition, something, something, something. Because mm -hmm. what I think happens is that Angostura would sometimes sell barrels of rum mm -hmm. to other, con other um, bottlers who would then bottle the rum it's and like sell. A, it's like a white label. Yes, kind of correct. So they would ask me about particular, oh, this is a trend, that rum, this was a trend. I was like, I've never seen it, I don't know about yeah, it. Because yeah. it, was, it wasn't it was bottled in front mm -hmm. of that. Right. I guess the, the rum was probably purchased wholesale mm -hmm. and then resold. So is that a, a very common practice? Or, um, so, or could uh, you speak about it? Well, you know, I, I, I could speak <laughs> just very little about it. Yeah. I, I will say uh, it's called bulk purchasing. Right. right. right? So uh, yeah, a lot of brands out there that use Angostura as their base. They want the best rum. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's, you know, it's, I, I like to speak very little about it, but it's something that we're proud of also because, again, this is their base. They yeah. know this is a, a good quality rum. Oh, yeah. So, so bulk rum is a part of it. Um, so... I mean, you probably see Zaya, things like Zaya. You, it's, it's actually bottled in Trinidad also, yeah. at Angostura, you okay. know, things like that. But there are other brands that just purchase the, the rum and they do the repackaging on their right. own, that kind of thing. But the base is Angostura. But they have license to say it's a Trinidad rum. Because well, yeah. So, yeah. So, this is why you yeah, see yeah. so many rums out there and you see Trinidad. Trinidad. Yeah. Yeah. Trinidad. And yeah. it's like, well, I don't know this side of us in this home. So, you know, it's, it's one of the things for me. When I go to, I, there's so many rums, like uh, two weeks, uh, not sorry, even uh, four days ago, I was, uh, not four days, a week ago, I was in uh, Berlin. Rum festival, mm -hmm. you know, and, and you have rum festivals all over, yeah. you know, and during that time there's the London Rum Festival also, uh, during the same time of that, and you know it, there's, it's just showing you the love for rum and the category itself, and I will say you know the term Trinidad comes up in many places. You spoke about Carony, and uh, this is where when we created uh, the House of Angostura, when we created uh, the 1787, uh, which pays homage to the House of Laperouse. When the House of Laperouse was created, you had the, the Spaniards who were uh, controlling the island. And they invited the French during the French Revolution. And they said, you know, you can come under two conditions. One, you, you accept our religion. And two, you start one of those sugar plantations. <laughs> right? And they created the first sugar plantation, which is called the House of Laperouse. Yeah. Ten years later, you had about 90 sugar plantations. Mm -hmm. And Caroni was one of them. Mm -hmm. Now, okay. one of the things about Caroni, the, 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 the rum production was not on the, the plantation or whether the sugar <coughs> was made. It was separately. Okay. But, you know, it was one of those rums that was uh, done with a pot distillation style. So it had very heavy congeners and, and a very, uh, you know, heavy depth mm -hmm. in terms of the quality of it. Um, and this is one of the charms. It was old school, but it was charming. You mm -hmm. know, and to the palate of rum drinkers, it's one that has a, a novelty to it. 
so we don't uh, sell Caroni, but Caroni, you'd find Caroni rums uh, outside oh, there. Yeah, right. So you have a blend, you, you know. So when you see a 15 year old Caroni, it's not necessarily all Caroni sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know, it has a blend of it, which is good. Sometimes you have those that really are just the, the, the real stuff, which is good. But I always tell people there isn't the best rum. You know, each rum has a different style, so it's right, one that you yeah. have to appreciate. Yeah. Yeah. It's like telling a Jamaican to a Trinidadian, you know, if I ask you, Jez, you know, who you prefer, a Trinidadian or a Jamaican, you know? Mm -hmm. and it's like, yeah. <laughs> 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 you know, it's, like, it's Caribbean people, you know, yeah. so you have that, that, well, that difference. Yeah, so, yeah. So, so, Daniel, I see you, you pour us a drink, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What's yeah. Up, so, yeah. so let me go through so this. Yeah, season, yeah, season, 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 do real, real Daniel, style. We so 45 minutes so we ain't yeah, take a yeah, drink and usually, know, know. usually no, oh, we, no, we drunk. We drunk. <laughs> you ain't understand what we talk about. Right now we wrap it up. Yeah, <laughs> so, so listen to me. This is a good time. This is a good time. So we have, we have, we have good time here. So what I'm going to do is just go through a proper tasting here with you on a, on a spirit. All right? So mm -hmm. the first thing you want to do is, uh, is look at the color. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. is, this is the first appeal. The first appeal is attraction. If you look at it, it has a nice golden amber to it. Yes. It's nice and filtrated. It's clear. It's clean. It has a, and it has a little depth to it. That gold color is very charming. You know, it makes you feel like you want to take a sip and just feel all the flavors. Just take it. a sip, is it? No, 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 no. <laughs> no. Before, before you, before you put your nose inside the yeah. glass, what I want you to understand. Yeah, 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 hold on, hold on. <laughs> you have two types of spirits. You have fermented and you have distilled spirits. Mm -hmm. Fermented spirits yeah, are like wine and beer. And the, the ABV on that, which is the alcohol by volume, can range from uh, 9 to 20%, right? Okay. So, but the distilled spirit, you're talking about 40%. So, you don't want to just dive your nose into this thing, all okay. right? It's going to bruise some of the sensory feelings in your nose. Oh, so, if you really wanna, so, if you really want to get the, the secondary notes inside of there, what mm -hmm. I need you to do is spread your nose above the glass and right. breathe in with your mouth open. Hmm. All right? And you start to taste some of the light flavors. I, yeah, I kind of feel a little yeah. tingle. Yeah, yeah. Are you yes, feeling, are you feeling it on your palate? Are you feeling it on your tongue? Yeah, you feel Fort, folks, 46 minutes are for up, you know. Eh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, you know, you know, this whole session, <laughs> session kind of reminded me of, um, you know, Patrice Roberts, and she said, we reach the stage, we walk, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and they hug in the part, no, no. Eh? And they just, uh, turn it up. To, I can't All wait. Right, I know, I know, I know. That's right. Yeah. All right, so one more thing. That's true, so. So, mom, let's Sure. Right? So you have two styles of tasting, right? Yeah. If you, so I mean, the legs are beautiful. You could see some. The legs style. are beautiful. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's slowly running down. It's a little bit thick, <laughs> all right, which is nice. It gives you an, uh, an, an idea of what style of character it is. It's, right. a, it's a medium. It's a light to medium style bodied rum. Mm -hmm. So this is what the impression of those legs are giving it. Um, so on the tasting now, you have two ways. Now, if you had a spittoon, which is something you spit in, now you have different styles. If you go to a French style uh, tasting, You'll always have a spittoon. Okay. You put the spirit inside your mouth. Now, whenever you're doing a competition, this is how they do it, with a spittoon. You taste the rum, you put it a uh, first sip, circulate like mouthwash, mm -hmm. spit it out. Mm -hmm. So now your mouth is activated and ready to take about the lighter notes. Okay. And then you take a sip. Now you have to cover your entire palate, not a shot. So it covers all of this, the, 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 the sensory feelings on your tongue, so you can taste the bitter, the sweet, that kind of thing right. on it. All right? But now, we don't have a spittoon. So what we're going to do... We have a, we have swallow. a, we have a, we have yeah, a swallow. A we have a swallow too. <laughs> right. we, can, we don't have to so, walk that. So first step, just allow everything to go through. Sit on it. So guys, it's a pleasure. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Finally, <laughs> finally, <laughs> folks, you hear the glass? You hear the glass? Now finally we can take something. All that teasing, Daniel, teasing me. <laughs> ah, my gosh. Good stuff. Wow. <laughs> No, just yeah, yeah. Tell all that is the best yeah, woman. Yeah, yeah, Tell all yeah. that. <laughs> it was worth the wait. It uh, was yeah, worth see? the wait. You hear me? And I think this is the first time I drink in 1998. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Nito, yeah. Well, okay, I said street, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. I yeah. Uh, <laughs> So uh, the correct term is right, Jiz has said yeah, neat. Neat, neat is, uh, is beautiful. So right, and, and it is very neat. So what very you get neat on the palate. Yeah, so what you're gonna get is now um, yeah, uh, you get a maple, the honey, the, the vanilla, nuts, the some butterscotch, yeah. <coughs> I, that I, last time. Just uh, I like to call it the creme brulee of rums. Yeah, so it's beautiful. So what you get I'm getting like slight bitter at the end. Yeah, so that's gonna be more of the herbal notes. You get some light spicy notes like lemongrass at the back mm -hmm. but what I love is the finish it sits on your palate and it stays there it massages your palate it yeah, enters with such there. subtlety very gentle but you have layers of flavors that goes down now it's a light to medium style spirit but it gives an impression of a heavier style spirit right. you know so it's, a, it's, a, it's beautiful now what even makes it incredible is the fact that it's versatile you take this spirit you can have it neat if you want to do a Trini style and drink it with coconut water 
which you'll absolutely fall in love with 1919 and coconut water if you don't fall in love with the girls in trinidad <laughs> you're gonna fall in love with with 1919 <laughs> and coconut water in that order yeah. <laughs> yeah. especially this 1919 see the legs on this 1919 yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nobody, listen i'm still kind of you know i'm still in the zone here you know so you know, i'll tell you something eh? right now we're celebrating old-fashioned week globally so old fashioned is a cocktail, uh, or you know, it's a it's a whiskey type cocktail, right? So you have whiskey, or you know, and uh, your bourbon, uh, a type of bourbon. You add two dashes of Angostura bitters, one dash of orange. You stir it with a with a bar spoon of sugar, mm-hmm. right? And you make an old fashioned. An old fashioned is a classic cocktail, and we've been a part of that. Now, now you have people asking for a 1919 old fashioned. Okay. This is okay. how big it is, yeah. okay. and 1919 rum old fashioned. So, I did bring some ingredients. But hey, hey, now yeah. we're talking all about right. all the season. <laughs> Time for the main course. Yeah, boys. Well, That's uh, a go in. Yeah. That's so, a go in. this is actually good because, yeah. So, uh-huh. we can take it on the next. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Nice. Yeah. So, so, it's a 1990 old fashioned, but I always tell people there are two ways you test a good rum you have it neat or you have it in a daiquiri. Now, the classic <laughs> style. Yeah, yeah. Listen to me. Listen to me. I'm not talking about on TJ Friday's daiquiri with mango and peach and strawberry. You know. A classic style daiquiri. Don't no brand. Don't no brand. All right. A classic style daiquiri. It's just rum, sugar, lime. That's it. Rum, sugar, lime. Yeah. Let's three ingredients. This. Now, I'll tell you that. That's the, that's the recipe for a good daiquiri. The recipe for a perfect daiquiri is rum, sugar, lime, and three dashes of Angostura aromatic oh. Let's do this. All right. So this is where, you know, you, whenever you want to test the, the, the character of a good spirit in a cocktail, you use no, those classic on. styles. Stop. Just now. Rum, sugar, lime. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sounds like the ingredients for rum punch. It sounds like the ingredients mm-hmm. for um, like the base. So it's it's simple, mm-hmm. but what makes it different? So it's a different style of drink. It's a shaken style of drink. Mm-hmm. So it's served straight, straight up, uh-huh. which okay. is martini style. Okay. okay. Which means I put two ounces of spirit. And I do a balance of sweet and sour with the lime and, and the sugar. Mm-hmm. And I have some aromatic bitters inside of there to balance it off. Okay. Shake in a nice cool shake and serve into a cool chilled coop. Okay, so it's, and a, yeah. it's a technique. Yeah. It's how you... Yeah. Okay. So you have the, what do you have in, in, in terms of bartending? You have methods of, of making a cocktail. Mm-hmm. You can blend, you can stir, you can shake. Right. And all these give a different impression of the cocktail. Okay. So if you build something, mm-hmm. you may not have the, the, the infusion or, or integration of all the flavors properly. Mm. So when you take your first sip, you're like, ah. Yeah. 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 Okay. But when you shake a cocktail you get it infused when you stir the cocktail it comes to balance so your first sip makes you smile and that's what every bartender wants to see oh, <laughs> oh, oh, shake and not stir oh. I don't know what to do but you see that night <laughs> <laughs> I find this thing I'm a kind of, I find, bartender yes, I, I find this episode there's a, there's a kind of a you know a kind of a, a rudeness to it <laughs> these so drinks they are bought they are, yes, they are bought so it's, called, it's called stimulation I'll, <laughs> tell you, I'll tell you something one one let, me, let, me, let me end up on this one you know right? the second sip <laughs> Tastes better. Right. Every sip is gonna taste my, better. My two, my two, yeah. two sip tastes good. Oh I take two, my two already. First, first round, second yeah. round, you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now for me, the first one was. What's that? Oh, I don't have a drink. Yeah, custom with that. So, <laughs> the art of bartending is the art of stimulation. And I'll tell you, the, I'll tell you why. Mm. I'll justify this, right? There it goes. Since you're talking about, you know, this the whole yeah. sensible feeling. Yeah. Now, as a bartender, you want to stimulate your guests with your senses. So when you see, you're stimulated by sight, when you see the ingredients going into a mixing glass or, mm-hmm. or a shaker, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. You're stimulated by sound when you hear the ice shaking into a shaker, mm-hmm. all right? Not even realizing, but you're already being stimulated. You're stimulated by scent when you pick up a cocktail and it has a nice aroma to it, mm-hmm. all right? You're stimulated by touch when you pick up a chill glass, when you see us chilling a, a, a coupe or a martini glass mm-hmm. to make it cold. When you touch that chill glass, you're already stimulated by touch, mm-hmm. right? And of course, you're stimulated by taste when the cocktail is balanced and beautiful. Mm-hmm. So it's a whole art of stimulation once you can achieve all those elements you're gonna have a happy guess and a good tip that's what we're talking about mm-hmm. they may have a tall 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 <laughs> oh, that's a fulfilled day. Huh? Psych, the man hey, you have to see it you have to touch it you have to feel I it on, I intend on doing all of them <laughs> taste it <laughs> I intend on doing every single yeah, one yeah they hear it <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's a feeling, it's a vibe. Empress. This shit was nice. Yeah. Okay. So, so Ram Club Bowl, you know what? This segment is called Tune to Bus. I don't want to tell Ole about it because you all know about it already. And when Dubs Bus the tune, sometimes it's related to the episode. And today we're talking about rum, right? 
So I went and I dig up in the archives of all you. I dig up in the archives. It is not. It is not that song. All right, all right. Hit with the spirit lash. All right, all right, all right. Ready? And this is a story, so y'all need to listen keenly, right? Hold on. Let me line up the effects. Let me, let me, let me, let me bust the effects first. Listen keenly. Listen, listen. I need a bottle of rum Made in Trinidad Oi. I sang to me a song How the people treated him bad He said they running behind whiskey Because they had him money Like they vexed with me Cause I'm cancer free Hold yes, on Mr. Starter Is my last hit but Whiskey sugar Is from starches Rum is my joke Rum is my joke <laughs> pull up, pull up, pull up. What tune? <laughs> what the hell is that? What is that? What tune is that, Dubs? What's the name of that? That, that just become my anthem there, boy. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> Rum Club Will. Hold on, hold on. Let me reason with, with Rum Club Will a second. Now, today we have a special guest by the name of Daniel Jones. He spent the, he spent the evening with us. We spoke about Rum. And the, school and, and, us. He school us. Yes. He, 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 he take us back to school. Mm. But let me tell you something, Rum Club Will. Right? When Dubs play a tune for all when Dubs find a tune, Dubs did his homework. Hold tune on again. This, hey. is, this is Sparrow. The name of this tune is called Rum is Macho. Birdie boy. Listen keenly. Rum is Macho. Again. <laughs> I need a bottle of rum Made in Trinidad Sang to me a song How the people treating him bad He said they run him behind whiskey Because they had him money Like they vex with me Cause I'm cancer free Yes, Mr. Tata it's molasses, molasses, whiskey, sugar. Hey. It's from starches. Rum is my joke. 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 Rum Tune my tune. <laughs> <laughs> hey, request. <laughs> I like where you sound. Kaka did you sound? You know that. Kaka did you sound? Laugh it still. Just cut it yourself. Hey, big request to Daniel Jones. Rum is macho. Rum is macho. More drinks. Thank you, Mr. Daniel. Whiskey sugar. I love this rum. Rum is macho. Everybody, everybody. Rum is macho. Rum is macho. Rum is macho. Rum is macho. All right, everybody, everybody. Guys, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Listen, I go like that. Get away. You may find the spring. Spring. <laughs> this son of the soil. There's Boosie of Foreign Exchange. Boosie of Foreign Exchange. There was, was Power was, 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 was what Marshall is all. All right, again, come, everybody. Everybody, rum is macho. Rum is macho. Rum is macho. Rum is macho. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Rum is macho. It's the part of what? Let's go. Pull up. Got done. Tune, boy. Tune. <laughs> okay. Tune for bus. <laughs> Rum Club, we out. 
Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube using the handle RumClub1868 and listen to us on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, and SoundCloud. Later.